Well, Joe, as I think you know, one of the, the great fears that people have throughout the world is the diagnosis of cancer. And one of the questions that's really become to plague all of us in the country is why, with so much effort being put forward to treating cancer, why cancer still seems to be on a rise. And so one explanation is that we're all living better and healthier lives, and, and therefore we're able to, to stave off a number of other diseases like heart attacks and other things. But um, one of the things that we've come to appreciate as we understood that certain things that we put into our bodies cause cancer, such as when you and I were growing up, there was the idea that smoking would cause cancer. I think throughout the world we know that that's true now. We see, particularly here in New York and elsewhere, that the laws on banning public smoking have really decreased that risk. But the unfortunate thing is we put a lot of other things into our bodies. And one of the things we do is not eat particularly well, particularly here in America. And the rising rate of obesity has been increasing the rate of cancer dramatically uh, throughout the population. One of the questions is why? And so one of the fundamental things about the Jeffrey Bean Foundation is to shine a light on that issue. Obviously, it's an issue uh, for the communities that come together, uh, that Jeffrey Bean supports the fashion industry where Jeffrey Bean came from, uh, cancer research, which is I represent here at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and obviously um, the ability of uh, rock music and uh, the, the place of music in all of our lives to bring a message out to people is something that's important. And what we've come to realize is as certain cancers disappeared, as we got better and better at providing food throughout the world through refrigeration and other things, and certain cancers disappeared, things that we uh, associated with horrible deaths from cancer, such as stomach cancer, which occurred because we used smoking to cure meats 100 years ago. Those have gone away, but they've been replaced by the fact that we can get so many calories at a fast food store around the world, and those calories aren't the healthiest for us, that we're seeing a huge rate in cancer, and it's all the major cancers. It's breast cancer, it's colon cancer, it's the ones that we have no great treatments for, pancreatic cancer. So one of the things that we do here in the Jeffrey Bean Foundation support that's given to Memorial Sloan Kettering is try and bring new investigators with new ideas about how we might attack these problems. Now one important thing is to prevent it, and that gets out the word that obesity is a risk, and that eating not healthy foods is, is, is also a risk. And so the question is, what are those not healthy foods? Um, for a long time we thought that the foods were the fats that we eat. That turns out for cancer not to be the big culprit. It turns out to be the sugars, the simple sugars that we eat that mm -hmm. are the most dangerous. And that came from basic research that was funded here by the Jeffrey Bean Foundation at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And we have new investigators that are starting to work on ways to attack that risk of cancer that comes from that type of overeating. At the same time, it's allowed us to start to ask, why is it when a cancer cell is, a cell is overfed, it's more likely to get cancer? Well, when it has too much fuel, cells start to burn that off, and that extra burning of fuel without any, any way to go actually creates a mutation in cells more frequently. And so cells acquire, when they're overeating, uh, by burning off the extra fuel, more a higher rate of mutation of the DNA that we've inherited from mom and dad. The other thing that cells do, that, which you hadn't completely appreciated, is that, in fact, we inherited the same information from mom and dad. You know, we got half of the genetic information that made us ourselves from mom and half from dad. And you may have seen the, 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 the recent reports in the paper about how that's not enough to make us. That ultimately each cell in our body has to take that information and figure out what it makes, well, how to use that information to make exactly what type of cell it needs to be. So that a hair cell uses only those genes that are necessary for that. That a cell that allows you to see vision uses a certain set of genes. And what we've learned is that cells are restricted by how they are fed within our body into the kinds of ways in which they can access our genome. And one of the things when cells start to overeat is that they can access more genes and they screw it up. And that really understanding that process is part of giving young investigators, which the Jeffrey Bean Foundation does here, the, the ability to investigate new ideas. So we're able to bring, once we have this program going, we're able to bring new young people that want from all over the world who are interested in, I want to investigate that, give them funding to get started on their unique idea, and add to the team of investigators that does that. So very recently we just added one of the uh, new senior investigators in the Jeffrey Bean Foundation, a guy who wants to understand how it is when cells overeat that they create these new epigenetic marks and how that leads to cells getting screwed up about what they should do in our body. One of the things that we've learned about cancer is it's a failure of a cell to execute its normal role for all the other cells that make us up. So if you cut yourself, you need a new set of cells that align where that cut is and heal the skin. But if one cell says, ah, oh, I don't want to do that, I just want to make more of myself, and gets confused by that process, that's the first step to cancer. 
And so his recruitment allows us to investigate a new way by changing how that cell is metabolizing things to force it back into the normal program that has to differentiate. And that's what's great about the Jeffrey Bean Foundation. It allows us to bring new ideas immediately, test them, and bring other people to test it further and bring collaborative teams together. Much the way musicians come together. You have an individual person who's talented in their particular instrument, but you can bring them together in a team to make something much better, a band that plays something new and something more valued, by the way. So you're able to get get right to the to the heart of the thing with the money from Jeffrey, Bre Jeffrey Bean. Uh, that's, uh, uh, speaking of, of what we eat, the, uh, um, the sugar. So we find out that um, the corn sugar right. is, is so bad. We just read about that, I don't know, uh, just uh, not too long ago. And all of a sudden it's, uh, everybody's looking at how much corn, corn syrup right. is in, in, in different kinds of food. And again, and that's, uh, that, that looks at a bigger picture, which is the processed food. Right. And uh, the, uh, say you look at, um, say in Japan before World War II and uh, the, our occupation there, um, th there was a much lower incidence of, uh, of medical problems because right. they were eating brown rice. And then when they started eating white rice, they had got a taste for white rice Things started to change, so right. that's that's such an uh, an obvious thing, and I and I just wonder because those those businesses that supply those kind of foods, um, the corn syrups and the you know the processed food and all those those are such huge companies. If that's a, a part of of why it takes so long to to, to change the right. the course of this, you know, to to get. Uh, um, just, just the way cancer is cured, it, it doesn't seem like there, there has been like any great, huge changes in, in a long time. Uh, and, I, and I think that the work that you're doing here um, is, is it's out, of, it's out, out of the box, and it's got to be tough um, uh, to try and get others to, to co right. come along with it. I mean, you're not just battling the, just getting people to be aware of it, get the money, and you know, obviously, if, if there's a cancer in the family, you're going to get, you know, people who whose awareness is raised, and they're going to do whatever whatever they can. But um, say if, if it doesn't touch them, to get them to be um, uh, responsive to, to your needs, it's got to be tough when you've got this this uh, almost monolithic uh, business thing uh, telling you. Look, everything's okay. We got it. This works. It's great. We got this. Well, radiation now, radiation later, chemo right. now, chemo later, whatever, and that's it. But you guys, you look at things, and uh, it's it's just great to see. And that's that's one of the things that excited me about being involved here, and seeing what I could do. Well, it's great when we bring the communities th together because not only do we want to develop new insights into cancer that lead to new treatments. So for example, the young investigator that we brought here to test this new idea that, about epigenetics just started a clinical trial this week. Three months after he arrives, he's able to start with the money that he's given, a new opportunity to give new treatments to patients that can change this, this paradigm. And if we can start those therapies working on patients that have existing cancer, we can get some traction on the ideas that we have to take the whole concept more seriously. Because ultimately the goal is here not only to cure patients that have cancer, but ultimately prevent it. And that is going to take a, a lot more work, and that's why we really have to get the word out. And one of the really important things that Jeffrey Bean does is it allows us to recruit the best possible talent, the best possible minds together. And getting out this Rock Stars to Cancer campaign really allows to shine a light on what an important activity it is doing basic research, cancer research and translational research to advance cancer therapies. And, and that really works because uh, here at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we're, we have, we're blessed to be here in New York, where everyone who's a young and in their new profession wants to come and test themselves against the world, and now with the Jeffrey Bean <laughs> Foundation, we can bring them and let them test themselves against the very best. Well, uh, one of the things, uh, as far as the, uh, there, there are a lot of parallels between the way, uh, the, the creativity of, of, of searching for a new, uh, um, a new cure or a new, uh, a new way to, to deal with it, uh, in the same, or with writing a song, a lot of the, the parallels are 
it's the, it's the process of doing it. And that's, that's the, the closest parallel I can see in, in, in speaking to the, to the researchers and scientists. It's, uh, it's spending the time in, in the lab daily and very often going home without a success. Right. But it's that process of, of like, hey, maybe I'll get it tomorrow. Hey, maybe it'll come to me tonight. And maybe it'll, and, and, and it's the same thing with music. When you're down there in the studio, you're working, you're trying to come up with a song spend hours and hours and hours tr trying to get right. there and it's like uh, it may take months and months to, to get it and it's the same thing with with what you do and and that's that's the parallel as well that I see that I can can uh, when when I talk with with, uh, with you and, and and other researchers um, there's a very close close parallel to that yeah. and and I can see that that's where the that's where a lot of the glamour is that I don't think people understand, and that's what that's what makes it the, the rock star part of it. it the, the star, I guess, is the it's not being on the cover of a magazine or being in the being on the radio, whatever. It's it's the it's it's that daily work that you do in the in the lab or in the studio. That's that's really the uh, that's when you when you when you're up against the other other people. It's like right. you said. It's like like. Um, you're up against the best in the world, right. and uh, and we, we both are, because it's uh, and and that's the drive, and that's the excitement, and that's the glamour to me. One of the important things about the Jeffrey Bean Foundation and its partnership with Memorial Sloan Kettering is part of the resources that are that are developed by the foundation are given to us to actually provide that best recording studio. You, you went and visited the labs this yeah. morning, and ha the giving them the tools to be able to enact their new ideas and their new dream is absolutely essential to this. You gotta have a world-class recording studio if you're gonna be able to have that creativity come to the fore and be realized in a way that people appreciate it. Yeah, well, I mean, you can do it with uh, with coat hangers and chewing gum, but it's a lot easier when you got the best stainless steel and you got the, this, the best German this, and you got the best, right. you, know, well. you know, all that stuff. And it, because, and to, to be, to be, uh, um, at the at the at the uh, at the start, when you really got a lot of a, a lot of juice, um, and be put in that situation where there there are people around you that are that successful, and uh, um, and you learn from them, and, and right. uh, obviously there's, there's the, that hierarchy, and that that helps inspire people, and to, to have that um, that situation is, is it's it's unique and it's brilliant, and congratulations. That's all I can say. Well, it's uh, it's a. Yeah, I think we all believe in the the importance of the mission that we have here, and it's great to have a partnership like the Jeffrey Bean Foundation and Memorial Sloan Kettering to realize that dream. So thanks for being here. Well, keep it up. That's all I can say. <laughs> great.